GameSir T1S. Within the past few years, the mobile gaming industry has grown massively. So, as a result, the quality of mobile gaming has also increased. With that in mind, the tech companies are releasing more and more accessories to enhance the mobile gaming experience. Today, I'll be looking at one of the newer peripherals on the market. This is the GameSir T1S. It looks mm, quite like a PlayStation controller, as you can see, and it's got rubber handles, which make it quite grippy. It's a lot lighter, I feel, and uh, a lot less bulky than some other similar controllers out on the market. It seems as though all the buttons and controls have a good cushion feel to them, but I've found that the thumbsticks, which by the way are clickable, had an especially good degree of sensitivity, which is particularly useful for some FPS games, such as Modern Combat 5. There is a robust bracket here in the middle that folds nicely into the body of the controller, which is used for holding your phone whilst gaming. Underneath that bracket are the four LED indicators which show the various modes of connection. For Android, iOS, there's mouse simulation mode, and for PC. Though it connects via Bluetooth to Android phones very easily, its compatibility with iOS phones is more limited in terms of what games you can play. To connect it to your PC wirelessly, GameSir has included a 2.4 GHz Bluetooth receiver at the bottom of the controller that you can plug into your PC USB slot. When playing on the PC, the gamepad has a rumble feature that works with certain games. I found that the Bluetooth wireless connection worked well, but if you want to reduce input lag when playing on the PC, GameSir has also included an option for wired connectivity. To test out the T1S, I'll be using this. It's a Blackview A9 Pro, which, as a side note, is Blackview's first dual rear camera smartphone. So, what I need to do to pair the gamepad to the phone is quite simple. First, I just hold down the home button and A until the Android LED flashes, then simply connect it under the Bluetooth section of my phone settings. All right, so let's play. I'm gonna be playing Contra 3, which was originally for the SNES about 25 years ago, so definitely retro. Okay, found the way to go. It might seem obvious, but... Just keep on, oh dear, shooting. That ominous looking dog there. What is that going to do? And of course it's gonna attack me. Oh, darn. Well, as you can see, Contra is not really my game. You might have noticed I got my phone very slightly off to the side here. That's so this top bit of the bracket doesn't hit the power button. Um, actually, in terms of games, this works on a wide variety, especially if you're running an Android phone plays a lot of the old retro games like this and also some of the newer modern ones like your FIFA and Asphalt and Modern Combat 5. So it's pretty versatile. Now one of the things that I was a little bit concerned about when I was first setting this controller up was that there'd be a lot of phantom buttons that just didn't do anything or the buttons wouldn't match up to where you'd expect them to on a console. But it's pretty much um, exactly on your traditional PlayStation or SNES controllers. Um, so it's very intuitive as you're playing it. And it feels like a console controller. So far so good. And not the kind of lag that I thought there'd be. Overall, it's very simple and easy to set up and install. It's got a well-made build and it improves the playability of most games. And in some cases, will give you an advantage when it comes to online gaming. Check out the link in the description for full specs or to buy your own GameSir T1S.